Hello, it's Sarah from the Huntington's and Child and Family Centres. Or is it? Am I somebody else today? Am I somebody else from the character of the story that I'm going to read to you today? Well, our theme this week is witches and wizards. And I'm reading a very special story, one of our favourite stories that we always read at this time of year when we're mixing up our potions and making our pumpkin jelly. Um, so I thought I'd give you a few cute clues as to our story this week. So I'm wearing a witch's hat. I have a wand. I have a broomstick. And I think the biggest clue, I have a long, long plait that has a little bow tied at the end, just like our main character. Have you guessed who it could be? I think you're right. It is room on the broom and there she is there's our witch with her hat and her cloak and her wand and her broom and of course her long hair tied in a plait we're going to read room on the broom by julia donaldson one of our favorite authors she also wrote the gruffalo the gruffalo child stick man all of our favorite stories so are you sitting comfortably are you ready? Room on the broom. The witch had a cat and a very tall hat and long ginger hair which she wore in a plait. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. Blown across the sky. Gone, just like that. Down, cried the witch. And they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with the hat in his jaws. He'd found it. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly down on her head, I am a dog, as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? <gasps> yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forest they flew, the dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed aloud and held on to her hat, but away blew the bow from her long ginger plait. Blown away too. Down, cried the witch. And they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her, be bent her head low. Then said as the witch tied her plait in a bow, I am a bird as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? <gasps> Yes, cried the witch. So the bird fluttered on. The witch trapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Flying through the sky again. Over the weeds and the rivers they flew. The bird shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Uh-oh, now the wand's blown away too. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden, from out of a pond, leapt a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a croak, as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak. I am a frog, as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? <gasps> yes, cried the witch. So the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy and... <gasps> the roo, the broom snapped in two. Oh dear. Oh dear. There's just too many people on there. The witch's half broomstick 
flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. Oh dear. I wonder what this could be. <gasps> I am a dragon as mean as can be and I'm planning to have witch and chips for my tea. Yay! cried the witch flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her breathing out fire. Help! cried the witch flying down to the ground. She looked all around but no help could be found. The dragon drew nearer and licking his lips said, Maybe this once I'll have witch without chips. Oh dear. This does not look good for the witch, does it? But just as he planned to begin on his feast from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark and sticky and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads. It had wings like a bird. And its terrible voice when it started to speak was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strode from the ditch. And it said to the dragon, Buzz off! That's my witch! Oh dear. Those faces look a little bit familiar. Can you see? I recognise a couple of those. The dragon drew back and he started to shake. Oh, I'm sorry, he spluttered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat and phew, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you I'd be in that dragon's inside. They scared the dragon off. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, Find something, everyone. Throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the dog found a twig, and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in, and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom. Then out rose a truly magnificent broom with seats for the witch and the cat and the dog a nest for the bird a shower for the frog yes cried the witch and they all clambered on the witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh they were gone that's a lovely story we like reading that story at halloween time don't we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon bye